friend, I am blown away by today's lesson. This one's powerful. It's powerful. Let's pray and we'll dig in. Lord, your word cuts deep. Uh, thank you for it. Thank you for how you've blessed us with your word that we might know you and know your heart. Oh, Lord, make us more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, here we are. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. Okay, so we know from where we left off yesterday, like Jesus is expounding on the law, right? Remember, he said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And so, and then he ended, we ended yesterday with, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And we know the scribes and the Pharisees, they were like keepers of the law, right? So here's a continuation of teaching about the law and who okay so we need to probably this goes without saying but we need to understand the who again we have Jesus these are Jesus's words and he is speaking to his disciples to those who are following him and he's reminding them in this passage, I think he reminds them of what they've been taught previously, right? He says, you have heard that it was said to those of old. <laughs> and so this was previous teaching by Moses because Jesus goes on to say, you shall not murder. And we know that was one of the 10 commandments. I did put murder in my keyword column. It means what I think it means to kill and intentionally and with premeditation. The cross references Exodus 20, 13. Here's where uh, Moses first spoke or God gave this command to Moses that he then passed on to the Israelites who were called to be and were set apart to be God's people. You shall not murder. It's again, Moses reiterates it in Deuteronomy 5, 17. You shall not murder. Uh, when we look at it in the Old Testament, when we look at it in Exodus, we also learn that this murder covers causing human death through carelessness or negligence. So it's, it's murder is causing someone to die, whether it's premeditated or not. All right, so this was... Again, to be clear, this was one of the Ten Commandments that Moses had previously given the Israelites. This is one of the Ten Commandments that the uh, Pharisees and the scribes would unpack, right? And they created even more laws around this one law. So here is, okay, what is murder? Well, we literally defined it as killing, as, as death. And then Jesus goes on to specify the result. And so I ask this question, what is the result of murder and breaking God's commandment, do not murder? Well, Jesus says, will be liable to judgment. So unpacking that just a bit, liable means to be subject to legal action. Judgment uh, is a determination of right and wrong on legal matters. Okay, so liable, uh, subject to legal, uh, legal action. So in a court of law, in what court of law is Jesus speaking to? He's speaking to God's court of law here. All right, and judgment means you're either right or wrong. There's no gray, right? It's black or white, you're right or you're wrong whether you've broken the law or not, whether you have murdered. Okay, so defining that, Jesus 
is speaking, he's saying, he's declaring, he's stating his judgment, his opinion on the meaning of the law. And he, there's an important word here starting in verse 32, but here is an important conjunction. But I say to you, Jesus speaks to his followers, what? <laughs> right? Jesus extrapolates concerning who is liable to legal action and faces judgment. This word judgment is mentioned four times. Uh, liable is mentioned, well, liable, liable, I'm sorry, liable is mentioned four times. So subject to legal action is mentioned four times. We see judgment in a sense four times as well. Twice he uses the word judgment. Uh, then he uses the council who would be the Jewish judges and then the hell of fire, which um, here's a place reserved for judgment for those determined guilty uh, in a legal matter in God's court, right? So God's court, this is, this is strong, strong verbiage. All right, so what does, how does Jesus extrapolate this command, do not murder? Well, number one, he says you're liable if you murder. Number two, everyone who is angry with his brother is liable as if committing murder. Uh, number three, whoever insults his brother is liable. <laughs> uh, and number four, whoever says you fool is liable. So how do we understand this? Friend, Jesus is inferring that all of these are equally wrong, uh, equally wrong as committing murder. Um, the perpetrator is liable to judgment by whom? Yes, under the Jewish law, under the Jewish council, but more so under God. Here's a window into God's heart of what murder looks like. Here's, here's the heart. Here's the spirit of the law, the spirit of murder in God's heart and in God's mind. So, we might ask the question, who then is guilty? Who is guilty? Friends, we're all guilty. Like legally, we are dead people walking, right? We are dead. Who has not been angry with their brother? Who has, um, who has not insulted another? Who has not even just thought, you fool? Uh, friends, legally, under God's law, legally speaking, we are all guilty, which means we are dead, right? We are dead in trespasses. I mean, this is where Paul gets in Ephesians 2, 1, uh, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins. Apart from Christ, we all are dead to sin. We are guilty. We are guilty. So main point here, Jesus, I, I think Jesus redefines murder, right? And under his redefinition, we are all guilty. But we need to understand that here's a window into the heart of God. Now, friend, I, I am, I just feel like I should share. When I first just sat down to ponder, you shall not murder, you know what struck me today? It struck me like, wow, just how broken are we as a people, as humankind, that God had to command, you shall not murder. Like, how broken is that? And so if we take this a step further under Jesus's redefinition of murder, I mean, think the next step holds true too. Like, do we really need to be told that it is wrong to be angry with our brother, to be hateful, to dislike, to be unkind, to be insulting? Do we really need to be told that this is wrong and goes against God's heart? Um, 
Wow, friends, we are broken. <laughs> we are broken. Um, I, I found this to be such a powerful teaching in highlighting our brokenness and recognizing that we are needy. I am needy. We are, as we started off, as Jesus started off teaching, poor in spirit, poor in spirit, empty, void, apart from Jesus Christ. I've got nothing. I am guilty of murder under Jesus's definition. Um, I need Jesus. I need him. Only through Jesus, only through God's help, can we love, can we love him and love one another as we should. Uh, only through him, only through Jesus, can I have a heart united with God's heart. Oh, friends, application today. I think application ought to take us directly to confessing our sin, surrendering, working through anger with God, working through unforgiveness, working through hate and dislike of our fellow mankind until we can have hearts that are united with God's heart through Christ. All right, pretty powerful teaching today.